Joey, welcome to Halloween Daily. Thank you so much for hanging out and chatting with us today. Thank you so much for having me. I am uh, obviously like all Halloween fans and Michael Myers fans right now. We are so excited as uh, we are literally on the eve of the release of, of Halloween Ends. And I know it's an exciting time for you because you were just at the big premiere event in L.A. Uh, last night as we're recording this today. Um, so so um, how are you today after such what I'm sure was an amazing event? Tired. Uh, yeah. It was my first, uh, first everything last night. I had my my first premiere, first red carpet, first movie that I've ever been in. Um, so a lot of firsts. And so it was definitely very draining, but it was the most fun ever. So today I'm feeling a wee bit tired. Am I, I'm feeling it in my feet from the heels. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. And I do appreciate you uh, taking the time today. Uh and, and, and chatting with us. Um, like I said, it's very, very exciting. And um, we're excited to, to learn more about you and, and a little bit about your character as we all go into this uh, new chapter, the final chapter of the Halloween I franchise. And um, it's, it's such a big deal for us fans. But before we get into that, um, if, if it's all right, we always, being Halloween Daily News, where every day is Halloween, we, we always like to start off with a little bit about the holiday itself and what Halloween kind of means to you even before um, working on a film and a franchise that is so synonymous with the holiday. Um, so do you celebrate and you look forward to Halloween and do you have fond memories of celebrating growing up? Halloween is, I, I'm, I'm obsessed with the holiday. Uh, and that's not even putting it, that's not even doing it justice. I, I'm one of those people that starts kind of as soon as I can, as soon as I see the first Halloween commercial or first mm -hmm. something in the store, that's when I start. And every year I stock up more and more and more. And now we just have this collection of all these decorations and it, and it bugs the hell, it did bug the hell out of my mom growing up because uh, she couldn't even get around the house with all my pumpkins and <laughs> all that. And I grew up in a place where um, it's, I feel like it was the perfect place to celebrate Halloween. You know, it, you had everything you could ever want during the fall season. You had the pumpkin patches, the, the mazes, the haunted houses, the, the perfect falling trees. I, I, I grew up in Seattle area. So, um, I moved now down to California and it's just not the same year. And I was so disappointed the first time I, I spent a Halloween down here because you don't have the changing colors. You don't have haunted houses. You don't have pumpkin patches. And so you're like, is it even Halloween anymore? Mm -hmm. So I'm very excited. I'm going to go back up to Washington this year just to kind of ring in the holiday. Yeah, yeah. Kind of yeah. get back in touch with, uh, with yeah. your, your Halloween roots. I love it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I love it. Very cool. And um, and so so you're you're among us then. You're one of us. Mm -hmm. so, so looking forward to the holiday. And so we always got to ask, what is your favorite Halloween costume that you've worn and your favorite Halloween candy? My favorite, okay. My favorite costume, <laughs> I, when I got to an age where my friends were like, oh, we can't trick or treat anymore. It's not cool anymore. I was like, okay. And we would always uh, go over to one of my friend's houses that was down this perfect street where he had everyone trick or treating. And I had this grand idea to dress up. Uh, <laughs> and um, I'm not sure if you're aware, I, it was Void Styles, if that was, so it, you know, it has like black tape over your mouth and very pale mm -hmm. makeup and, you know, dark around the eyes. And I just would sit there like a statue and wait for all the kids to come by. <laughs> and they would be like, is that real? I was like, yes, it is. And so they'd get their candy and they start leaving. And then that's when I'd get up and race towards them. And so they'd all fly, drop their candy and run down the night. That would be my trick or treating. I'd just pick up yes. the candy that they'd drop behind. I think that was probably because i think it was the most effective costume i think that was probably my favorite <laughs> that's a good one <laughs> yeah I like and that. then for the halloween candy i love twix i love kit kat mm -hmm. I, like. I i liked when i was a uh, when i was younger and they would make those popcorn balls mm -hmm. but now when i yeah. get them at the store they're not the same yeah so there goes that yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's a good one though. That's a good that, that that's good uh, throwback that you don't see is is often now, like you said. Yeah. And they're just not the same in the store in those little right. packages. Uh -uh. Right, right. 
<laughs> That's some good choices. I like that. Awesome. Um, how about scary movies, horror movies? Um, you know, you're we're we're here talking about what what for me and and a lot of people is is the the big horror event of the year, if not the decade for some people. Um, have you been? Are you a horror fan? Do you like scary movies? Mm -hmm, I do. My mom, my mom is not. So I always um, watched them by myself. So I got very mm -hmm. good at making my own little commentary to help me sleep soundly at night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, I, I do love horror, but it just doesn't scare me the same way that it did when I was a kid. Because yeah. I, I also know what it looks like behind the scenes now. So I, I have you know, that, oh, that was probably really funny to film. Oh, that was probably really long and grueling. So I can't really take it, you know. But when I watched it last night at the premiere, I didn't have any of that. Mm -hmm. And I was still genuinely, like, on the edge of my seat. Like, oh, what's going to happen next? Even though it's literally me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's, it's, I do love horror. And I think this one did a very good job. Awesome. Were, were you at all familiar with, um, Michael Myers in this franchise before um, getting involved with the project? Have you seen John Carpenter's original film? Mm -hmm, I did. Um, one of the, again, when, when I start early, I have this whole list of films that I watch every year. And nice. um, Halloween, the original one, is, is always on them. And uh, so I watch it every single year. And when I auditioned for it, I didn't know what the project was. And I didn't know... Uh, what it was until the callback and David was telling me about it and I was like oh this sounds awfully familiar <laughs> and, what this is and I said nope and he said it's it's the final installment of Halloween I said no way are you trying to make me pass out right now so it was I feel like it was healing for my inner child so now I get to watch I get to add it to the list of films I watch every year you know oh man that's awesome that's so awesome and and so um, you you mentioned that this is your your first movie. So is mm -hmm. acting something you've always been interested in, and and have you always been a performer? Yeah, when um, when I was a kid, I I told my kindergarten teacher I didn't need to learn math because I was going to be a singer and an actress. And needless to say, she wasn't pleased with that. But <laughs> I mean, it's working out. So yep. I I've, I've worked my butt off for it since I could talk and I it's this is my year I guess because I just finished filming uh, my second project uh we finished filming Halloween in March and I just finished filming in um August August September September uh for a film called Lisa Frankenstein so another kind of Halloween -y, mm -hmm. uh film Definitely. so yeah, it's it's finally working out for me. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it sounds like this is this is your time for sure, and mm -hmm. um, and, and it's Halloween time, so that's that's fitting as as well. So, can you walk us through? You said in the beginning you didn't even know that this was the the next Halloween movie. So, can right. you, can you kind of walk us through a little bit of the process of of getting this part? Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> So when I auditioned for it, I auditioned probably a month before Thanksgiving uh, of last year. And when I got the audition, it was actually for the part of Terry. And okay. Terry is, you know, this lead bully. And um, I was auditioning for the role of a guy. They submitted me and uh, I got the audition. I was like, holy shit, that's pretty cool. And I did the audition. It felt really good. I really loved the character because, you know, I was just a complete asshole. Yeah. And it's not at all like I am in real life, so I completely get to play somebody else, you know? And I submitted the audition. I was like, oh, yeah, I got this one. And then maybe mid-December came, and I've, you know, you don't hear anything. And you're like, well, it's just another no. But it's, you know, you get used to it. But this one kind of stung because it felt right, you know? Mm -hmm. So when I got my callback, I thought it was a callback for a film I auditioned for a week prior. Okay. So I went in with a completely wrong script, a completely different mindset. And remember, they used fake names for both films. So I had no idea. And I get into the room with the, the Zoom chat with the casting directors 
and they're like, okay, you know, do you just want to, when we put you in a room with David, you know, he's going to have you do some, some improv, you know, go over the script, you know, ask you some questions about it. I was like, that sounds great. He said, do you want to read it over with us? I said, absolutely. And we started, he said, it's your line. I said, no, it's not. And he said, yes, it is. And I said, oh, what's the first line? And he said it. And I was like, that is not what I have. <laughs> and he said, what do you have? And I said, uh, I started reading it. And he said, that's not what I have either. And he said, what script is that? And I said, it's for blah, 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 whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm looking at it for bully. And I said, no way. No <laughs> way. And so he said, you know what? Don't worry about it. Don't say anything. We're just going to send you in the room and cross our fingers. We're going to wing it. And I was like, solid. So um, puts me in a room with David. And they, I guess the heavens were on my side because David goes, I'm not going to have you do any of that. I just want to talk with you. I loved it. And I was like, oh, my God. So we just chatted about the movie. And it was in that process that I found out what the film really was. And um and I was very familiar with David's work and one of my favorites being Pineapple Express. It's so funny. Yeah. And so it was a very, very cool experience. And we just chatted about the film and, and my, my character, Margot, and if I was comfortable doing that. And I was like, hell yeah. And by the end of the phone call, I had the part. And uh, five minutes later, I got a call from my manager saying they, they're negotiating contracts. And I was like, this is, I feel like it happened so fast that, it just did not process, you know what yeah. I mean? I was like, cool. Like I didn't even have time to like, <laughs> you know, and that's a serious thing. You got to put that in there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was yeah. a hectic process, but it it was also short and sweet at the same time. So. <laughs> wow, that that is awesome. Um, and so you come into this, like you said, there's kind of a whirlwind process and and now you find out you know you're, you're stepping into this highly anticipated movie and um now i i haven't seen it yet and but when we, this interview comes out the it'll be out in theaters um and you're playing like you said a character named margo this is a brand new character for this franchise for for this uh current green trilogy of films as well um so give us give us a preview um the movie's out now um but what, what can you tell us a, a little bit about Margot that, that we should know going into this? Oh, gosh. I don't want to spoil anything. I don't know how much I'm allowed to say, but I can tell you that um, the character you will see on screen starting Friday is not the character that was originally written okay. and actually originally filmed. So it's a group of four of us bullies. Mm -hmm. Terry, Stacy, uh, Billy, and Margo, myself. And uh, the lovely writer, Paul, I don't know if I can say this, they're all real people from high school. And so he, wow. you know, he wrote us all based off real people. And um, so again, I was one of the four bullies and I was supposed to be asshole. Everything we filmed, you know, I was huge to the Corey Cunningham who were mm -hmm. just bullying the life out of Mm -hmm. and um there was a scene i don't know if i'm allowed to say this there was a scene that they did remove mm -hmm. uh because it made me look okay, okay just... mm -hmm. they removed this scene because when they did the screenings they realized that the audience responded better to me being the one character that felt guilty for treating him this way right. and so they're like we're going to capitalize on that right and so when I did my ADR work, when we did all that, we found a way to hone my character into being the one character that everyone was like, oh, she didn't deserve to die, you know, yeah. redemption arc. <laughs> and um, so they did end up taking out one scene that I think would have also been an audience favorite. And it was actually Jamie's idea. Uh, I, I moon her. <laughs> so it was a hell of a day on set. And I was like, it was just supposed to be like two or three takes and we but we were having so much fun with it and at this point I was like well everybody's already seen my butt so it doesn't really matter at this point so it's probably like 35 takes later <laughs> and every single one just had everyone cackling and it was it was so much fun and so it's kind of it's kind of uh, uh like oh shucks they didn't use it but I I think that the character art they are they created is something that the audience will really respond well to 
yeah, yeah, and um, and I'm sure at, at some point, hopefully anyway, they'll we'll get to see those deleted scenes or those alternate takes in some kind of uh, Blu-ray release down down Ooh. the road. I would imagine. I I would hope so. Universal. Uh, you hope know, so too. Uh, yeah, hope they'll they'll that'll surface at some point. I'm sure. Like but, they don't uh, tell me this stuff. I hope so too. <laughs> yeah. Um. So so it, and it sounds like um because we've talked to a lot of people that have worked on some of these most recent two movies, and they've said this too, that David is very collaborative on on set and, and in the not um, sticking to the script exactly, but allowing you guys a lot of times to kind of um, bring more of yourself into the role. Did you find that to, to be the case with playing Margot and um, in your experience? Absolutely. I, I didn't really know what to expect uh, mm -hmm. Uh, of David, I had heard that working with him is like a brush of fresh, fresh, fresh air, fresh mm -hmm. air in the entertainment industry. And um, but you know, because I had never really done anything personally, I had no idea what that would mean. Um, so going into it, I realized very quickly off the bat that I was able to have a lot of creative freedom with my character. You know, some directors they just want you to stick to the script, do not go out of the lines. This is what I, I've heard, and um, just do it the way they want you to do it. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what I was expecting because I didn't know. And so David would come up and he would ask, okay, do you think this makes sense there? Like, do you, do you like this part? Is there anything you want to add? Is there anything you want to change? And um, so he'd go, okay, I'll try this. And then, you know, he'd say this random thing and then you'd work it into your character. And um, it was very, very collaborative. It was very freeing. It was so much fun. He's so funny. He came up with all these random ideas about, about these things that would you would do and would happen that you would just never have even considered on your own. Um, so it, it made it a very, very fun process. That's awesome. And your it it sounds like most of your work is with um your your co-stars who are largely like yourself new to this franchise mm -hmm. and, and our audience obviously is going to want to learn um about all of all of you guys and, and get to know more about all of you can you talk a little bit about working with with them it sounds like you guys had your own kind of gang um here this Haddonfield gang it almost feels like yep again it was it was the four of us and uh our real names, uh, we have Martine and I, and mm -hmm. um, we are, we've become really good friends uh, off screen because we still, we both live in California. And so we are able to see each other more often. Whereas um, Mikey and Destiny, they live on the East Coast. So we're not able to see them much, but um, filming was very, very fun with them because it kind of got to a point where we were there, I'd say for about a month and a half. Mm -hmm. where uh, they would just come to my, my hotel room and I'd just make everybody food and we'd just sit there like watching Shrek. And it just became so much fun. It's like your own little set family. So it was really, really cool to be able to create those relationships with people that you're working with and that, you know, a week prior you didn't even know their name. Mm -hmm. And so um, working with them is, is so cool and they are so talented. And um, yeah, so that's a long time. You said you were there um, about a month and a half. Is that? Yeah, I, I was there for about um, two weeks. And then I went back home to California and I was supposed to come back two weeks after that. Well, I got a call about four days later saying, we want you on a plane tomorrow. I said, great. Mm -hmm. And so I uh, got back on, we filmed in Savannah, Georgia. I got back on a plane and I was there probably another three weeks, three, just over three weeks. So, um, and I, I yeah, Whew, it was super cool. <laughs> so you got to spend a lot of time on this set. And, and like I said, we've had, we've had some great experiences over the last four years talking to, to everybody from James Jude Courtney to a lot of different people that um, worked on these films. And, and they've all talked about how it's a, it's a family atmosphere on the set. So mm -hmm. as being kind of the new kids, in Haddonfield, um, did you guys feel that? And, and and what was it like, you know, kind of stepping into that as the new kids? Um, because this is the kind of the third movie in the row in a row of the same creative team. And um, but did you did you guys um, were you a part of that family as, as soon as it started? Or, or uh... 
Absolutely. I think um, it's always a little intimidating going into something, knowing that everyone's already gotten sure. past those. Nice to meet you. What's your favorite color? You know, right. they've already gotten past all that and everyone's already created those relationships. And so you step in not knowing what to expect or, you know, if you are going to be able to make those relationships by uh, the point your time is up. So I was intimidated, but as soon as I got there, it was just, I was welcomed with opened arms and uh, Jamie, I think, obviously I, again, I watch her every Halloween and Christmas since I was a kid. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I was in my head about it and, as soon as I met her, though, she's one of those people that that is just so warm to be around that you it just eases you. And I remember she she's she's not at all what I expected. You know, I, I expected just to be cordial. You know, like how's the weather? Oh, like where are you from? You know, but she would just come in karate chopping at you and saying all these crazy things, and then you just come back at her, and it, it was. <laughs> so funny and um so it really loosens you up and once you're loose I think it's 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 easy just to be around everyone and create that you know so I definitely think that we were a part of the family for this last film yeah, yeah. that's awesome and and like you said to to be already a, such a fan and and somebody who watches Jamie Lee Curtis every year like you say um and then there you are on set shooting scenes with her it sounds like you got to moon her so that was um um uh, pretty super awesome. super. yep i mean that 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 had to be um pretty wild yeah i i think it was very healing for my inner child you know uh yeah. it was very fulfilling so and, and the, i think the coolest part about it is and uh, at this point every time i'm able to do something i'm able to turn around and say to myself like, I've never been more proud of myself than I am right now. And I mean, to be able to, I've been able to do that over and over and over again this year. Mm -hmm. And so I think for personal growth and for, you know, personal love, I mean, it's hard to not like yourself when you're becoming the person you've always wanted to be. So, yeah, I, I am very, very proud of um where I started and where I'm, where I'm headed. Awesome, and and to play such an important part in in such a, a big movie that that has, is such an important landmark franchise in this genre. Mm -hmm. Um, and and again, we don't. I, as I'm recording this, I haven't seen the movie, so I don't know exactly what happens. We've caught a few glimpses of Margot in some of the marketing, mm -hmm. and I, I I think there's some hints that she's probably going to have an encounter with the shape somewhere in there. Um. Mm -hmm. What was it like for you, again, being a horror fan, knowing Halloween and Michael Myers to be on the set? And and here comes that iconic mask. I mean, what what was that like for you? Chilling. It makes the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. I mean, yeah. uh, I, I mean, it's larger than life, honestly. And it's when you see that mask walking towards you, I think that it kind of kicks in your fight or, fight or flight and you just really are like, am I seriously in danger right now? Or is this just part of the movie? I think it, it can get a little bit, because obviously you've seen all the movies, you know, as soon as this guy starts walking towards you, you're dead. Yeah. So I think it, it, it confuses you a little bit. It startles your system. And that's definitely what it did to me. Uh, so every single time I saw that mask, um, I would still have that little, whoop. okay, we're good, you know, so definitely. And with um, with uh, the Laurie Strode character, I feel like these movies, especially these most recent movies, I mean, she was always an iconic character within the, the horror genre, but it feels like, especially with David Gordon Green's interpretation and, and Jamie's most recent portrayal of the character in these films, she's really been elevated to this, this, um, whole new another level now of iconic status um so again just as a fan and someone who's now seen the, the finished film your, yourself and um and and knowing the other films and her history in this franchise what's that like for you to to feel like to to be a part of this this trilogy that really put her up there you know kind of kind of on an even 
uh, level with Michael Myers? You know, um, in this film, she, you really just see that she is just a badass. Uh, her, her fight scenes in this film were so much fun to watch last night. And um, obviously I'm going to be watching this as much as I can. Mm -hmm. But she's the scream queen of all scream queens. And um, I think that David Gordon Green really, really did her justice and her character justice in um, these past three films and really making her that badass character that we all were rooting for, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, not only that, but they, uh, you know, they made it so that you got to see her outside of you know, that, that badass, I'm going to kill him yeah. mindset. You got to see her with her granddaughter and with her daughter. And you got to see, you know, the little funny, quirky things that she does and her, her cute personality. So I think this film really made you fall in love with her even more. And I think even though it is the last one, mm -hmm. and as far as I know, um, I think after this one specifically, people are going to wish that there was another. Yeah. Yeah, just to see more of her. Yeah. She's, it was amazing. Yeah. That, that, that is amazing. And and she like is such... <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that? You're like, you didn't answer my question. <laughs> oh, no, no, you, no, you totally did. No, that, <laughs> that is... No, you you absolutely did. That's exactly what, you know, because I, I agree. I mean, I, I think, you know, she's just, um, you know, J Jamie's work in these films, too, has been just, you know, really, really amazing as well. And um, I like all the different iterations of Laurie Strode, but this is probably my favorite, you know? I mean, it's 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 been um, fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as we said last night, as we're recording this, just last night, you were at the Black Carpet premiere in Los Angeles for Halloween Ends with uh, with all of Hollywood out there turning out in force. And and you you said earlier in the in this um, interview that uh, it was your first premiere for your first movie so can, can you walk us through a little bit of that experience for you um it was very very surreal um walking down a, a carpet where you have probably 30 people taking a picture of you and you you've never done it before <laughs> i mean you you just you kind of have to work up to it you know mm -hmm. And I wish there was like a training course, like a crash course that I, that anyone could take before going down that because it, you know, you just want to, you want to look good, you know, you want to, you want to feel like you're, you're putting your best self, you know, forward for everyone. But it's so crazy to be in that you kind of get stuck in your own head. And so I had to make sure that I was actively, you know, Wear the smile on your face, Joey. Don't wear your thoughts on your face. <laughs> like, so it was, it was, it was crazy. And I, I would go down the carpet, and they were taking my picture, and I was like, "Oh my god!" And then um, it was kind of an L shape. So in between, at the point, you know, there was uh, kind of everybody just chatting and waiting for the the next trip down. And um, at that point, I was able to look down the carpet, and I, I saw. Uh, Jamie and, and Kyle and everyone doing their, their little interviews and um, it I was able to see my co-stars I hadn't seen them yet yesterday and um, everyone just looked fabulous and so it was that break there was like a breath of you know fresh air it was like mm -hmm. okay you know what it's gonna be like you can do it again and the second round is when I did my questions my first ever interviews oh my gosh and I think they went great I think they went great but mm -hmm they you know it's it's so cool to you know to watch this all these years and then to be a part of it so it's it was crazy and then after the carpet uh we went to our seats uh you know david got up and announced um the film and, and thanked everyone and they had a special message for jamie uh after you know having done this for 44 years of all fellow screen queen queens and um and it was so beautiful and I was able to see a, a lot of people there that um I you know I look up to and I admire and uh, some people that I was able to even work with on my most recent projects so 
uh, it, it was it was very very cool. It sounds like it, just an an amazing experience, and, and again for it to be your your first premiere and your first movie. I mean, it, it sounds like um, that that's the way to to kick off uh, your movie career. I know. I'm hoping by Friday. I hope I'll be in high demand. You know. That's so, it. Um, yeah. What do you do you think? Again, I mean, you're you're a fan. You you've watched these movies. I mean, Michael Myers and and this franchise. It's 44 years now, and um and and this is the final chapter for now, as far as we know. And, uh, but but you know, I mean, these characters always say they're going to carry on in some way, the same way Dracula and Frankenstein do, and um because I think they're that big and that iconic now. But what are your thoughts on on the, this unkillable appeal of of Michael Myers, Laurie Strode, and this whole franchise? Um, I think in a way it's um, it's just something that keeps on giving, you know. And I think in a way it's almost like a TV show where even though you've already had this whole storyline, they can keep coming up with more. And you just, you don't want it to end when you're invested in something and you've watched something for so long, you know, you have an emotional attachment to it. You know, you, you yeah. love it. And, and if you watched it that long, it's because you really like it. And um, so I think that kind of helps, helps everything move forward and continue to grow and, and uh, keep making all these films for everyone. Because if the audience loves it, give them what they want. Give the audience what they want, right? And so I think the longevity of this film franchise is is just testament to, um, like, the little family that it's uh, created of the audience and uh, of the fans and the love that everyone feels uh, when they watch the films, which is funny because it's literally murder, but <laughs> a lot of love. It, it really is, and it, and it is, we're, you know, I mean, we, we've been doing Halloween Daily News for 10 years and, and we've been fans forever and and just being out at, at conventions and, and meeting many of the people that have made these movies and just the fan community it is like you said it's, it's a weird irony but these are horror movies and and it's about a, a fictional serial killer but man there's a lot of love lot in this love. community a lot of love in the horror community in general we always talk about it that they, they love uh, dismemberment and murder but but not in real life, you know. In real life, they're, 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 they're the sweetest people. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> they're the sweetest Thanks people. Yep. Thank and you. and I'm sure it, it it has not even really set in. But I mean, you're you're a part of this now. Um, and and you know, stepping into this massive franchise, like I said, 44 years. This is the 13th movie. Um, and this is a massive, massive franchise in the genre and movie history. And it's it's got a huge legacy and, and a huge fan base and and a passionate and opinionated fan base and 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 um and you I'm sure you're gonna experience all of that and and so have you are you ready for that Have you thought about um that that you are now a part of this this massive legacy I don't think I mean I think about it day in and day out I don't think you will ever be ready for that You know I think it's it's you know, you expect people to uh, to love what you've done, and you expect people to hate it and wish you weren't in it. And um, so you can, you know, you you have those you have those moments where you're like, okay, I know this is coming. I know that once this comes out, this is going to be what I'm facing. Um, you know, this is the these are you know the things that I'm going to experience, but it's never quite to the magnitude that you realize and then when it all hits you, you you realize that there's just never really a proper way to prepare for that yeah so yeah. but i i sure as hell been trying so <laughs> i've been trying but um so I'm, I'm i'm very excited to see um what the audience uh has to say about it yeah yeah i'm, I'm i know as a fan i'm excited and i think fans are 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 going to be super excited to meet Margo and, um, and, mm -hmm. and, and of course, uh, learn, learn more about you and, uh, follow your career. Um, and we've, we've got, we've got to talk just a little bit. You, you mentioned your next project. It's been a busy year for you. And, um, mm -hmm. 
And like you said, that's kind of notable for our audience as well. Can What can you tell us about Lisa Frankenstein? Uh, okay, so Lisa Frankenstein, um, I signed on to in, I believe in July. Um, and we have our, our lovely creator, Miss Diablo, and we have our uh, wonderful director, Miss Zelda Williams, making her directorial debut. And um, our cast is just full of such talented people. We have Cole Sprouse, we have Catherine Newton, we have Liza Soberano, Henry Eikenberry, um, just so many talented people on this cast that I have the uh, pleasure of working with. And it's really just this quirky, horror, funny, odd um, film set in the 80s about this girl who, you know, moves to a new town, uh, Miss Catherine Newton, moves to a new town and she's not fitting in, she's not making friends. And so every day she goes to the cemetery and uh, just chills at the cemetery and in classic New Orleans fashion, in a storm, it uproots a 200 year old grave of a, of a Victorian poet who is played by Cole Sprouse. And um, she realizes that she can turn him into the man that she's always wanted, right? Mm. So she kind of picks pieces and pulls from different people that she, you know, she's like, I really like your ear, you know, whatever it is, and um, turns Cole into that person for her. And um, it's got such cute moments and such quirky things. And I uh, play a character named, everyone says it differently, uh, Tamara. And um, everyone's like, Tamara, Tammy, Tamara, Tamara. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I speak Mara. <laughs> um, and uh, she is the classic goth emo chick of the 80s. And she oh, is nice. Lisa's worst nightmare. And um, it's awesome. really kind of a, a battle of all battles between uh, Lisa and Tamara. And um, I think I think it's another thing that everyone's going to love because it's, it's so unconventional. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those ones that I think everyone will also be able to watch every year around Halloween mm -hmm. when it awesome. comes out. Yeah, it sounds great. Um, it, yeah, it sounds like right up our alley. And um, and another kind of fun modern spin on a, another timeless on genre a classic. classic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be super, super cool. And, of course, that got, hitting that nostalgia button um, with the 80s setting, too, yep. that doesn't hurt either. Yep, and um, I, uh, I don't know if you've seen really more than just my my face in the trailer, but my hair for the film, it's a classic shag, you know, wolf cut. And so uh, it it's like that, too, for Lisa Frankenstein. And so um, awesome. I think my hair, man, they're just like, you know what? That's 80s and 70s. <laughs> so it, I, I think it works really well for these for these two films. So, yeah, classic 80s nostalgia. Love it. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that, that, that's everywhere right now. That's everybody's kind of sweet spot right now. That's, mm -hmm. that's awesome. It's always well, been my sweet spot though. Oh yeah. Yeah. Same here. Well, we're, we're going to definitely be looking forward to Lisa Frankenstein as well. That's coming out next year, I guess, or they haven't set the date for it. But they haven't told year. when, but I'm assuming next year because we just finished filming. So I don't know when next year, but I will keep everybody updated. Excellent. Excellent. And uh, yeah, we'll have to talk again when, when that one comes out. But um, Halloween ends. It's out now. And um, I, like I said, I know fans, um, they've been counting down the days. And, and, and mm, I know they're yeah. going to um, be excited to, uh, to, to, to meet Margo and uh, to learn more about uh, you in, in this awesome conversation. So I, I can't thank you enough for... Thank you so for, much. I really appreciate it. Yeah, this has just been a pleasure. And... Um, and got me even more excited to see the movie as if that was possible. Oh, but I'm, I'm even more so now. Oh, I'm so glad. I hope you love it. Absolutely. I can't wait to see what you have to say about it. Absolutely. And and then then we'll have you back on and we can, we can talk about um, all even more details then. Uh, the down stuff the road. I'm allowed to share. Exactly. Sounds, yep. Exactly. That sounds great. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. And as always, happy Halloween. Happy Halloween.